Hello and welcome. It is the 14th day of October 2019. My name is Derek Albets, Trades of the Light. Well, that is within each his own risk and their own reward. BTC dominance right now on the daily term. We had price action from this uh, big low back on September the 18th come up to a lower high level uh, at the 71 on September the 24th. It then did not do well within the 18 as we can see how it was not able to lift off from the time that it uh, uh, securely went there on September 27th, two days of pausing it. And then these days in here where it was just continuously showing weakness amongst that area. And then it broke support, leg lower. Well, well now it's having a difficult time with the 18 lows again. We've seen within this line that it's resisting or resisted where it's supported on two different occasions. Now, of course, this little line in here, which represents this previous level of support, it's now below it, not holding it, and look at leaving. And looking, it is leaving the 18 average of lows. Whether it actually does what it usually does will come with time, and no, we'll definitely know in short enough time. But usually, what it does is at least, and usually more, comes down to this previous low. But I'd be expecting a good leg lower now that I see this is a good high probability, as that would be about 67 high change to me would seem more probable than the price having a pierce above the 18 highs. We'll see which one occurs though. And let's uh, transition uh, really quickly. I might have to spend at least two minutes on this on Daily Fantasy. As when I first put in this game in here, I just thought about something quickly in my head, and 20 cents meant absolutely, literally nothing, basically. And it broke even, but that meant a lot. Especially the next day when I increased my ROI. I mean, after day two, I had 70 cents in and 95 cents back. That was 25 on 75, and I realized at that point there, that's like 30% ROI. I got to take this damn serious. I'm kidding. But I did notice in here that, hey, wait a second, I'm starting to see a common thread here. Is, well, what I do is I put a lineup in for the Winnipeg pro Winnipeg Jets. What you do is you, in DraftKings Daily Fantasy is you can put whatever players you want in up to a salary cap. And I figured, okay, if I work it in this type of strategy, and I pro at Winnipeg this way, and then I pro at Islanders this way, I think it's, it could work out pretty good. Well, it works out that the team that wins is the team that's going to finish near the top, and the team that loses is going to finish near the bottom. And when I had these kind of results, like near the top, near the bottom, near the top, near the bottom here. Same thing here. Same thing every single time. It's like, man, how does... And then I'm understanding why the mechanism works. I'm like, oh my goodness. And then as we move it on and these stakes go higher, I'm starting to think to myself, yeah, these, th this is a very, very profitable strategy that just every single game just will grind your balance higher, I think. Not only that, but you're going to get situations like, well, last night I, I could have done better. I should have done better. And it wasn't a good spot overall. It was actually a bad game when you look at the box score. Yet, it still worked out well. It wasn't a really that bad of a game. It was it was an okay game, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't good, though. In that, I can look at box scores and say, oh my goodness, this day you're going to lose big. Or all of it to most of it. This day is going to be okay, pretty good. Oh, this day could be fantastic. Most of these days haven't been too great, but some have been okay. And a lot of them have been, oh my goodness, they were good, but you were unlucky, and yet you still cashed. Like, this was a huge game here. The uh, I can't even know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to find it, actually. It's the uh, It was this game here. You talk about being unlucky. Oh, that was a huge game to cash. But if you look deeper in the box scores, it was like, oh my goodness. Phil Kessel did that, and it worked. Oh my goodness, that was unlucky. But you still cashed. But on an advanced level, it should have meant that this should have been 0 0.7 to win that 178 because there was no need to play any Vegas pro lineups that game. That's on an advanced level, though. On a basic level, the way I feel is that this thing can work out very, very well. So for tonight, I'm going to keep on increasing the stakes. I could do up to 27, no, for sure. At, guaranteed, I think, yeah, that return on investment's got to be something near 20%. Uh, I could definitely think 80 could easily be done. And as the season moves on, it's only going to get better because the season goes on until June. And then the stakes would only get bigger at the end of the season. 
and the gameplay for participants and consensus I think would only be continued to be profitable. If you're interested in that information, let me know. I really don't want to let anyone know yet. But if you are interested, I kind of do, but I can't do it for free. If you've already sent gifts, all that stuff, let me know. It wouldn't be that much. Probably about $25 to add cryptos. And I don't even, and it only take me about 25, 30 minutes to read. It'd only be about literally a small essay, three pages, because you don't need to know much on the basic strategy. Intermediate, advanced strategies I wouldn't teach yet because I don't think I would want to give them out yet. And I'm not even using them for my results as of yet. I haven't had a game where I used anything outside of my basic strategy. And I say this because the season is so, so early that this is fun. This is perfect to build a bankroll because as the season gets later, the opportunities for max bets, as I mentioned, it's easy to bet $81 today. Well, in the playoffs, it's probably going to be easy to bet 1000 or 5000 based on what I expect the uh, public to do, the games that are available, and the maximum you'd be allowed to put out. Bitcoin now. So we're done with that, that little bit of a gig. I did that in, well, that first time I did it nine and a half minutes, because I actually wrote a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't show now. Because I'm like, yeah, I don't want to sell any of this stuff. But I'll be interested, and I'll show as time goes on how the results move. So $9 for tonight, I'm hoping I do well. Okay, so we got the situation here from this low, still holding within this move. Yeah, it's been in a downtrend. We had a terrible line, but I mean, it's it's had a decent leg from this move. Can we do downtrend lines? Probably something like this now, yeah? Yeah. It hasn't retraced too much as far as empty, em, filling empty space, but it has, of course, done some to get to in here. Will we get to the 64 barrier? Maybe. But it's one of those things that I mentioned yesterday. When you morph like a, a, a an elephant and a rhino together, you're probably going to get something like an elephino. And that's exactly what I have to think at this stage on what's going to come next. And move down to somewhere in the realistically well noticeably below 7,000. Closer to 6,000 and 7,000 move. Or... If we're going to get a move that has a very, like, to back to five figures over 10,000. I don't know. But there's often times where I'm going to be confident saying, yeah, I, I like this or I love that. And there's going to be times where I'm going to be confident saying, hell if I know. But as it plays out, I can see we got resistance up here. We got support down here. And, and the way I look at it is, regardless of which one happens, it's going to be a concise, clear, damn good break in red or green candle size, most likely, to whichever one it goes to next. I mean, as it goes from the short term, we had this big decline. And with the original resistance established, which was first in here, well, that was this resistance. And then this layer of resistance here, was the resistance beforehand, so the first and after became the first and after again. Okay, we still haven't got above that line. And the original support in here, well, it got upgraded down to here, but since it originally did, it supported it here, and it hasn't went below it since. It's in the sideways consolidation, and it will be until it's not. And since it has last first established this level of support on 26th, of September, well, it's been uh, plus two weeks, and it's been in it. Since this resistance test at the 1st of October, the entire month, two weeks. Just wait and see. There's not much else I can do. Let's now move on to altcoins. It's another day. It's another 12,102 Satoshi. And... Skycoin, interesting one. It's had a nice move, and I wanted to see it even go up more if it can, because it's been getting its ass kicked. And I, I remember saying before, I was like, man, I hope this goes down. Then it did. And then I was like, now I hope it goes up. And it's, well, it has been. At least that's because of how the ratio trades. I get a lot at a little of one coin over another, and I want to balance it out. And now I got some Skycoin that I want to sell. On the daily term, 
And I think this is when I was probably... It might have been in here when I said I wanted to sell the sky. Within the ratio. Maybe even up in here. I can't remember when. Well, the, the other ratio, sky and go, would tell me. But within this, it's been just grinding its way higher. Nothing less, nothing more. It's just staying in this range. No major volatile moves. The overall rate of ascent has been better than double from low to high. It was below the four handle. Now it's above the nine handle. So noticeably over 120-ish X percent or whatever number you may come up with. It doesn't matter. It all changes anyway. And it doesn't matter that the exact numbers are. But it has, of course, been in a spot where we had major support at 25,000. We need to do better than double just to get to that point. I never ever traded it at that point back into this time frame. But I realize if it goes there, I'm just going to really react to the market, not predict what the market will do to get to that point. So I'm never trying to bet this short-term move to go up or down. And I'm really not even predicting short, long-term that this is definitely going to go up because hell no, I'm not. But I'm predicting its volatility was going to be really fun with another one. And it was. It's been exactly what I thought. Sky Go totally has the most trades for me. And I figured it would because of its volatility. And that's just why I wanted to do it. It was just one of those fun, put some funny monies together because the stakes were all have always been low for me on this it's really really nothing uh the size of my sky coin is the size of my bankroll for betting player props which didn't do too well yesterday but still 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 doing well and technically barely ahead of the game but anyway it's low stakes because it's fun to play and if movements can have, get out of this, change the story, how is the cha story going to change? Because as I've said, this move is nothing more, nothing less. Well, to me, it's either got to do one of three things. It's either got to, A, go down. That would change the story. Uh, I first need to see it go to the 18 average of lows, let alone weakness and breaking of the 18 lows for that. But it's not even doing that because price action is staying at and above the 18 highs and it has since in here. What it hasn't done is go sideways. Now, there's been attempts to it. Maybe you make a high like this. Okay, well, here's a possible range for neutrality. And during this entire thing, you could have been saying that, but when it broke out of this and supported resistance, no, it didn't do that. So that's number two. Number three is go up. And you say it's already doing that. Yeah. But it can go up in a different story. Because what happens if and when you break a level of resistance? You get increased volatility. You might get a day where it's like 62% in one day. Or 162% in a day. Especially with coins like this, which is why I want to play these types of coins, because I know this is a lot more likely to go up 80% or 170% in a day than Litecoin. And it's more likely to go up 500% in a day because of its volatility. Of course, it hasn't happened, and it may never. But if it does, I'm going to react to that situation as it is. And that's the better way of doing it is adjusting to the message of the market as you see going on. What's the situation for you specifically as a trader? For myself, let me just bring up the sky and go. Well, first let's bring up uh, go, go chain. So I've been talking a lot about that, and I still got a lot of data I want to go over amongst it as far as uh, blockchain moves. But of course, it comes at a time when something I enjoy more, hockey, is doing what it's doing. And what's happening with it is a test within the 18 lows on the daily. Bands flatten out. That's one of the stages that's went on. We still need to see it. Fa I haven't seen anything for it to fail at this level. But I realize if I want to say, okay, oh my goodness, this looks strong. Well, when can I be saying, what could I have been saying that? As it was breaking out in here, something to look out for. But I'm putting sell orders on top. I'm usually selling on the way up in here. Of course, it didn't do it. In here, it made the statement. In here, it did as well. And then during this run, but we can see that this was most certainly a failed breakout in here. Oftentimes failed moves can have fast moves in the opposite direction. We haven't had a fast move yet in the opposite direction, which is basically one leg lower than here. 
could it happen? Sure. And even if it does, you know, so be it. This is what I look for is these parkets to have these up and down choppy moves. I realize just like the other one I talk about, exact same reasons for the big moves, how this could go up big at any given time. And I'm not trying to predict when it does. But on a situation, if it does something like that, I'm going to be uh, looking to uh, be getting some big moves and then adjust to the situations how I would accordingly. And of course, my net objective is to just try to keep on flipping things back and forth, playing the X, Y, Z game. X. I remember in school how things were. That's like not normal X because an X looks like that. But you couldn't put that X in because that looked like the multiply symbol. And I understood that without anyone teaching me that part. But I always thought the X looked cool like that back in the math class days. Okay. So Z is the increase of Bitcoin, how much it goes up in dollar terms. Y is how much your altcoins go up against Bitcoin. So for me, this thing starts at uh, like t well, somewhere back in here, like 270. Somewhere, it's like 270. That's my start number for, for whatever. And if you're starting now, it'd be 119. How much? So for me at this stage, Y is at about uh, 0.4. It's negative. It's pretty much negative. I need this number to be positive. So, to me, I'm, I, I, we're in heavy, for altcoin, getting into this type of my strategy, it's totally heavy accumulation right now. Uh, Zed, what's its price value from this point? Well, Bitcoin back in May would say been, well, say if it was like 6,000, it would be like 1.3 or whatever. Maybe it's 1. X is how much you're gaining. For me, that's about 1.45 or 1.5. Maybe 1.6 even. It's going up pretty good. So I multiply them all together. But in heavy uh, distribution points, well, that would mean, well, what happens if this goes up to like 800, 900? Well, now my Y would be positive. What would X be? Well, it would be higher. And most likely, you got Bitcoin say it like, oh, Bitcoin's at 20,000. Well, now Z's equal to 3. When this number is really big, it's time to do some major selling of these coins and uh Things like Bitcoin, into things like precious metals, into things like food on your table, gas in your vehicle, a whole bunch of different cool things you can do it for. And that's, of course, in heavy distribution modes. So you got accumulation, heavy accumulation, neutrality, distribution, and heavy distribution. Now, crossing it off to the uh, sky go ratio. So, yeah, this is. Up when the price got up in here in July, I was like, man, I want this to go down. And it did. And then when it went down to here, I was like, I want to go back up. And it's starting to do it. Well, that's basically what I hope for within ratio trading. Is for the two aspects of these up and down moves to occur. Aspect number one is these smaller moves like we see in here. And they can happen on small percentage moves like this. We can see a couple in here. This low was like 65, this high is 78. The difference there is like 20%. You can def I'm playing on those moves. And then you have like this high, this low, this high, this low. That, that's what I want to see. See, I, I hope, I, I'm not a short term. I, yeah, I want this to go up long term, but I wouldn't mind seeing this come down here, do something like this to get up to there. That, that's awesome because then I can do a buyback and all those types of great things. So that's the first aspect I want these, these, my coins to do when I ratio trade them. And the second aspect are the major key levels. You got key level here, key level here. Okay, now we have a key level here. Now I want some sort of key level here. And then after the fact, I maybe uh, I come back down here again where you do a bunch of these moves and then you do it again and then you have all of the moves and then stuff like that. It's just things that happen in that occurrence there as well. And you're bound to get more of this type of stuff with altcoins together than I think you do uh, against either the dollar or against the Bitcoin. And not only that, but as I talk about the XYZ, this gives me a chance not trading these coins against Bitcoin primarily as the uh, base currency or either one of the two currencies, is that when Y is good, then I can then work my trades to Bitcoin that way. I could have, say, 
let me just uh, finish this off by just putting some more numbers in here. I could have, uh, say, of one coin, say I have 500 of one whatever type of coin and say 2,500 of another. The ratio is 5 to 1 of whatever cross, we'll say. So I have five times of the cheaper coin. And then we have the X, Y, Z come into play. And early on over the last few months, maybe right now, you're like, oh my goodness, hasn't been too great. Maybe you got, uh, this coin isn't worth as, this coin has been doing better. It's down to 475. But hey, this one's at like, say, 39.85. And then the, the opposite happens. You start selling this stuff. So now this thing is worth, say, 2,700. You got 2,700 of them. And this one, maybe you have 850 or even 950 or whatever. And then it gets really good later on. It's like, okay, now I got like, say, 1,950 of the one that I started with five. And I got 3,650 of these or something. And it can even be better than that. But regardless, you had all of these flippings and you'd, you'd end up, say, having situations where I'm like, yeah, I got like 4x of this coin and maybe you get like say 40 percent of another coin pretty much doing better than double when you get it's true uh, it could be your y could be like two or 2.2 or something and then you have like z though bitcoins up like uh that, that's your x by the way so z maybe bitcoins up maybe three times five times and you notice that the alt set so this is the important one the y well i guess z's important too as well but you got the why where all the altcoins are up way too much so what you do is you'd want to sell a lot of these coins so now you're like okay um, maybe I aggressively want to even sell all of them or a good portion of them or even in this situation I'm gonna I have 1950 and 3650 say the ratio is uh, 3 to 1 okay I want uh, say 700 of these and 2100 to continue on so I'm gonna take 1250 and sell them for Bitcoin I'm going to take 1550 and sell them for Bitcoin. And then I'm going to take my Bitcoin and move them to my hardware wallet. If the prices go much cheaper, I'll buy some back. If if not and they go higher, well, I'll probably keep doing I'll, I'll just do the same thing with this. I'll just sell more when the XYZ is big with what I'm still going to be keeping on trading. If the mar if I'm not right about this top, I'll keep on doing it. Which is why I'm all about progression selling anyway. Like if it just keeps moving in that direction, it's going to react to it. And if the reaction says, oh, maybe I should sell some for Bitcoin and do it this way. Maybe I should sell some for, buy some gold and silver. Maybe I should do this and that. If the mathematics and the parameters say it's a good play, I'll do it. So then, in conclusion, thank you for tuning in. Again, I don't want to sell any hockey information as of yet. Because the more people that do what I do, the worse it is. I am uh, playing against the people as well, but I think the game is big enough where if a small amount of people are doing what I'm doing, it doesn't really hurt it too much. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.